There is one major difference between those who are successful investors and those who aren't. Decision making. It's the most valuable skill anyone can improve. And by the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding of what separates these two groups and how you can improve the ratio of success in your investment decisions. Here are 15 investing mistakes the ultra wealthy don't make. Number one, being emotional about money. Emotions trump reason when emotions aren't kept in check. The ultra wealthy have a secret advantage over everyone else. It's called deal flow. Deal flow relates to the number of opportunities and investments that they have access to. The more deals you make, the better your decision making mechanism becomes and the less emotional you'll be about money. One of the biggest mistakes newbie investors make is they don't understand all the terms of the deal. They look only at the surface level and never go deep into the numbers. Do your own research is just something newbie investors say but never follow through on. The ultra wealthy, they actually do the due diligence. The numbers don't lie. And the more you're able to understand what's happening under the hood, the less likely you are to be left holding the bag. Number two, trying to time the market. The golden rule of investing is do not buy bad assets. If you buy a great asset, it doesn't matter when you buy it as it will continue to generate value for you. Your ability to differentiate between bad and good assets is what will determine your rate of success. Waiting for the right time is most often than not taxing on the person waiting because there's always demand for great assets and thus their value will continue going up through time. The ultra wealthy know that time in the market beats timing the market. You can actually tell how rich someone is based on what time horizons they use when they speak. This is what the S&P 500's performance looks like in the last 12 months. Ups, downs, fluctuations, a lack of predictability, right? But if you start using larger time horizons, that uncertain graph ends up looking more like this. Quality investments go up almost linearly through time when you think in decades instead of months. Number three, short-term bets, trades, and short-term thinking. The ultra wealthy no quick bets are a fool's errand. Here's something a casino owner once taught us on the difference between the rich and everyone else. When the rich come to a casino, they're there for the experience. They're walking in knowing they will spend money for the thrill, like a ride at a theme park. They assume they're not walking out with the money they came in with as a default. When poor people enter a casino, they're there to earn money. Poor people say they go in to double their money and we all know the odds are stacked against you and the house always wins. But for the ultra wealthy, it ends up being a positive experience either way because they got the thrill. They got the thing they came in for no matter if they win or lose. Well, for everyone else, it's only positive if they win. This difference is crucial when investing because investing dramatically differs from speculation or gambling, mainly through the time horizons of the outcome. The ultra wealthy actually prefer investments they don't have to touch for years upon years because they know every time they move funds, there will be commissions and taxes attached to those transactions eating away at their profits. But on the flip side, every newbie trader out there is day trading their hearts out while the platforms they trade on are slowly chipping away at their funds. Number four, being cash poor. Here's how the perspective on money differs from those who are educated versus those who are still learning. The poor buy assets with the hopes they'll be able to sell them later on for more than they paid for them and thus make a profit. The wealthy buy assets with the intention of never selling them. That's the difference between making money and building wealth. And once you understand this golden rule, you'll never think of the investments you make the same way again. The wealthy treat their investments like their personal piggy bank. You buy and add it to the pile. In time, that pile grows larger and larger. This approach allows you to look at the market differently. If the market price of an investment goes down, the wealthy jump at the opportunity to buy it at a discount. 
And this is why the ultra wealthy always have cash on hand waiting to be deployed. This is why most of their investments are focused on income generating assets. So they always have more rounds ready if the market fluctuates. While poor people make one bet and hope for the best, the rich are in a continuous accumulation mode, which is why the rich keep getting richer. Number five, putting all of your eggs into one basket. The more wealth you accumulate, the more your investment strategy changes. Allocating 100% of your investment to the public markets or a single sector opens you up to complete failure risk if your industry goes under. Your understanding of risk in relation to your ability to alter outcomes also compounds through time, especially as you begin to build wealth. Now here's the golden rule of diversification. 90% of your investments should be split based on your expertise. The rest is like play money. Now here's what that means. What do you understand best and in what ratio? Let's say you run an e-commerce business and also have some investments in real estate plus stocks. So what percentage of your expertise is in the e-commerce industry? What percentage of your expertise is in real estate? What percentage of your expertise is in stocks? Let's say it's 75% business, 20% real estate, and 5% stocks. Well, if you're really good at what you do, you should bet the most where you have a real competitive advantage. Invest in things that you have control over in proportion to your ability to deeply understand the market. Now, in this example, the business and real estate are where you understand the market the most. So 90% of your investments should go toward what you know. The rest of that 10% can go to alternative investments that have the potential to outperform the market where maybe you've got an interest, but you don't have 100% expertise to do it full time. Now this 10% is where you can take a little bit of risk because it's not going to affect your long-term strategy. A great example of alternative investment is luxury art. 2022 was the best auction year ever. The big three auction houses sold nearly $18 billion of blue chip art, especially in times of high inflation or pending recession like the ones we're in right now. Art is outperforming almost all traditional investments. Last time inflation was this high, contemporary art appreciated at an average of 20% per year, according to the MW index. For example, one of our favorite artists, Cause, well, his pieces have appreciated 40% plus year over year. And look, we know what you're thinking, but Alux, look, how can the average person take advantage of these kinds of returns when there's such a high entry price point barrier, meaning only the already rich can afford them? Well, that's where our friends at Masterworks comes into play. They took all of the concepts from stock investments and brought them into the art world. Now you can invest in blue chip art the same way you would invest in stocks. They buy the paintings. Each offering is qualified with the SEC and broken into shares. You buy shares for as low as $20 a share and once that painting is sold, the profit is distributed amongst the shareholders. All of Masterworks' 13 exits have been profitable to investors, and in all of their exits to date, Masterworks has delivered a positive net return to their investors. This is how, in 2022, they paid out over $25 million in total to their investors and why paintings sell in minutes. Normally, these kinds of investment platforms are closed off to retail investors, but since you're part of the Alux community, if you go to alux.com slash art right now, you can skip that waiting list. We'll leave the link in the description for you. Masterworks have been a solid supporter of our mission at Alux, and we're kind enough to sponsor this video. Number six, spreading yourself too thin. Your success as an investor will boil down to making a couple of right calls with enough upside to move your life forward.